Let me show you what a substance looks like inside Cinema 4D. In order to load the substance, we need to go to the Substance Asset Manager or just load from this little menu here. I will open the Substance Asset Manager and I'll go to the File, Load Asset. From the list of assets I have, and beware, it's the SBSAR files, I'm going to choose the first one, the Amethyst. I'll press Open. It will ask me if I want to copy it in the project location, just like with textures. I'm going to say no, and here it is. The Amethyst has been loaded in our scene. With the Amethyst selected, you will see in the attributes a lot of parameters. We will see what these do a bit later. To begin with, if you want to apply the substance to an object, you can't do it directly. What you can do is right-click and create a material out of it. Immediately there will be a material created with the same name as the substance. So it's called Amethyst. I'm going to double click and let's see what's going on here. I'm going to place these side by side. Number one, I would like you to notice that this has some little preview icons. If I click on the substance, you will see that the same preview icons, let me fold this, appear in the attributes down here at high resolution so we can see what they represent. And they have names, diffuse, specular, normal, bump, displacement, height. I'm sure you can read them, but I thought I'd read them for you instead. If we go to our new material, you will see that we have a color, and inside that color we have a substance shader. That substance shader is part of the substance integration. If I click on the icon, you will see we have a link, and we have a drop-down menu. If I click on the drop-down, you will see that the number of channels we have here is the same as the number of previews we have here. And they represent the diffuse, specular, normal, bump, displacement, height, just as we see in the attributes. And they have been used in the following way. The color, of course I changed this by mistake, it was diffuse. The color has the diffuse channel, the reflectance in the specular layer has the specular, the bump has the bump, the normal has the normal, and the displacement has the height. You will see that we have a displacement as well, but it hasn't been used here. We only have five channels whereas we have six available. One thing you need to know about substances is that although when we create the material using the Create Material menu, it will create a correlation between what substance thinks is the correct channel to put in the correct Cinema 4D material channel, but by no means that's restrictive. For example, I can go to the color channel click on my icon and instead of the diffuse channel I can put in here the normal channel and if I apply this material to a sphere just like any other material you will see that I'm actually using the normal channel instead of the color channel but that way we can do a lot of combinations and pretty much it doesn't make a huge difference. We can use any channel in any Cinema 4D channel. It does sound confusing, but think of it in the following manner. I can use an image as a color, but I can use that image in my reflectance, in my bump, in my normal, and in my displacement. Whether it's going to produce the correct result, that's another story. But in Cinema 4D, we can put any image in any of the material channels. No one is stopping us. The same paradigm works with substances. So just to understand, all these little previews you see here, the thumbnails, are nothing more than images. And where we are going to place them in which channel is just up to us. 
What I will do now is I'm going to delete the texture tag, I'm going to delete the material, and I'm going to recreate it so everything is in its right, in quotes, position. I'm going to drop this on my sphere, and I will render. You will see that my render looks low resolution. The reason is the following. If I select the substance and open up the basic properties, you will see I have a width and a height parameter. Here we can select from these predefined resolutions. I'll put it at the highest. And then I will render again. Now you can see that it's nice and crisp. If I want to see the high resolution in my viewport, all I have to do is double click on my material, go to my editor, go to the texture preview size, and instead of default, I'm going to use 2048. I'll close my material, and you will see now in my preview I have a very crisp and sharp preview of my substance. Let's render this. You can see that it's pretty much identical. Let's do something else. I'll double click on the amethyst and I will activate the sub polygon displacement. By default it's off to save in render speed and memory. I'll click it and then I'll render again. And you expect my sphere to be a bit displaced, just like the preview icon. The reason that doesn't happen is the following, and many users are sometimes confused by this. The sphere as a primitive object in Cinema 4D has this little switch here that says Render Perfect. With Render Perfect on, it will always render a sphere regardless of how many segments it has. It always renders a perfect sphere. But at the same time, it doesn't take into account any modulation to its geometry. So if I turn this off and I render, now you will see that my displacement has been applied properly. So although that's not substance specific, I thought I'd say it just to save you a few headaches. So there you go. We have applied our first substance, we've created our first material, and we have rendered our first substance-based sphere.